started. Just, yeah. On that side, what? Yep. That button, okay. So, uh, so today we're going to be doing wet mount and dry mount lab. Um, and you have, you've seen uh, your slide and a cover plate is a little thin little piece of plastic. This is typically glass, which you place over. So if you have something there, now some things you can just place and dry and place that cover plate over it and that's all you need. Others you need some water or some other liquid, a little bit, a drop or two. One drop took you enough and then you press it down slightly and then you can see it better. If you uh, read in your book it talks about how if you may have noticed in some of the slides you're looking at that they had different colors. That's not the normal color of it. Because they know that certain kinds of chemicals that they add to it will react to certain parts of the cell that say you're looking at, but not everything. And so it accentuates certain, you can see parts of the cell better when they do that. Um, sometimes just food coloring will help, but typically it's something else that uh, will make it easier to see the cell. And that's usually what slides that they've done. Very often they've done that. Uh, when you look at the monocot and dicot yesterday, that's just a, looking at the leaves from two different kinds of plants. And uh, so that's, that's not a big deal. Uh, you don't need to add dyes for that. It should have been green. Uh, and this, let's see. This is biology. Where is it? There it is. Got to be it. So, um, do you have any revised introduction lab reports? When you come in, guys, go ahead and place whatever needs to be turned in. Uh, go ahead and just place it here. Uh, right here. And that's what I'll collect. And make sure your name and the class. And if it's a lab, it should be lab in this case. What was it? What lab number was it? I'm getting confused with the class. One point three. That it was biology lab one or two. Is this one? Uh, there it is. I Introduction lab. lab one. Okay. Good. So your name's on this, right? Good. So that's what you want to do. Uh, place it here, and I'll collect that. Okay. Um, Now, I wanted to briefly talk about academic integrity, just so you know that you've heard this. Okay, no exam or, or, or test or quiz is going to be open book or open notes, or you can use the internet, or parents can help you if it's being done at home, uh, that kind of thing, unless the teacher says so, which I will not do. I don't do open book. I've taught 20 years. I think one time I had something like that, where they could use your notes, what happened was, it was in class, the students were taking good enough notes, so I said, I'm going to do a pop quiz, you can use your notes. Motivate people to take notes. But in general, that's not something that, that we'll do. But I may do something like that if I... Uh, so bring your notes each time. Plagiarism. In the MLA handbook, as a use of another eye, another's ideas are expressed without proper acknowledgement. So, if you find something online, and it wasn't originally your idea, but you learned from it. You want to give a little note, even though if you put in your own words to it, if you're copying it straight from the internet, best be in quotes, that part, okay? Even if you give credit to them, you don't put in quotes, you're claiming that this, I read it, this is my understanding, and it's not really what happened, you just kind of copy the cut and paste, right? So that's what you want to do. Uh, so it's not just word for word copying, it's anything that makes it appear like this was my idea. So you want to give credit to them. It's just a matter of being fair to other people. Um, even though sometimes plagiarism wasn't exactly intentional, you weren't maybe thinking about, yeah, I didn't give credit to them. That's why I went to this website, etc. Um, there can be serious results. You can fail the assignment, even the course. You can be suspended from the course, uh, removed from the program, say, you know what? 
This happened more than once. We need to know that you're being, you're doing your best to be honest. That's not something that's not going to happen this class, I'm sure, but we needed to cover it once. And we've done that. Now, lab three, you're going to prepare a slide with the wet mount. And lab four, you're going to do microscopic drawings. Now, we're actually going to be doing a wet mount and a dry mount. Um, wet mount is with a particular letter. When you pick a letter, pick a lowercase letter. Because if it's uppercase, like the letter B, if it gets reverted, you can't tell. It's still B. Whereas if it's like this, you can tell, oh, look what happened, it got inverted. So that's why you want to pick a lowercase letter from... I have to find something I can have you take it from, since... Oh, I want to do sprint because it would do better when it's being, making a wet mount. But if you turn to page 10 in your lab manuals, now, you should have already read page 10 or 11, page 15 and 16. If you haven't, you need to do that. The purpose of this experiment, well, first of all, you understand what a wet run is and a dry run, and I think it's kind of common sense. An hypothesis is what you expect to happen. So, under introduction, it said the purpose of the experiment is to learn how to make a wet run slide and practice focusing on specimens with the microscope. Remember when you bring it down to higher magnification, Guess what happens if you slide it over and it's too tight? It hits the, you just mess your slide all up, right? So make sure you've got it all the way down, and then you bring it back in. Now, you find the weaker magnification and you center what you're looking at in the center of the field of view. Then you bring it all the way down, mix higher magnification, bring it up until you can, until it's focused. The wet mount is a temporary slide prepared by floating a specimen in some water or other fluid. Um, you should add another source. You should re research and find out. It's part of your lab report. Anyway, you're going to learn how to make a wet mount slide and how to focus the microscope carefully. Okay? That's your introduction, right? The purpose, background, hypothesis. Hypothesis, how are you going to express the hypothesis? What are you going to see in that sentence? Uh, if then. If then. Good. Now, a lot of times you're observing, you notice it's hard to tell exactly what uh, you know, expect. One of the things you're going to do is you're going to learn what happens to the microscope when you magnify. Because what happens is, here's your fuel fuel for view. Better draw this. And something is right here and you want to center it so that you bring it to the tighter magnification it isn't lost okay it looks like we need to go this way to the left and down you actually need to go to the up and to the right just the opposite of what you think for that to end up uh, in your field of view because things get inverted if you have a picture of a candle and you look through it, it's upside down. They did an experiment uh, many years ago where some students in a college wore glasses like that had a little print in it, so it inverted everything. So you walk around, everybody's upside down. Guess what happened after a day or more of doing this, wearing these things? Mm -hmm. Their eyes stopped inverting the image. It was right side up. And when they took the glasses off, guess what? Everything was upside down for a while. It freaked the students out. And after all their minds said, oh, we got to invert it. So your mind does it, but the image formed in the back of your eyeball is inverted. If here's a candle, there's a light there, it's upside down. And it's the same thing happening when you're looking through a microscope. It's working like your eye, it's focusing. So that's how lenses work. You're going to cut the small letter E from a newspaper. You can pick the letter B or something else if you want. Uh, use an eyedropper, a drop of water will be placed on a clean microscope slide, and E will be placed in the drop of water with forceps. Then you're going to take the little cover slip and gently lay it on top and press it down just slightly. Now, once you focus it, take note of how it moves. So, do take note when it's off center where you want, 
which about the opposite direction what you think. And you might want that's a good observation, so I have to move it the opposite direction. I think things are inverted. I'm looking at E and oh it's not I can't read it, it's reading backwards. So those are the kinds of observations you should make. And record your data, answer questions in the book, uh, keep it objective.